There's a winter weather advisory for our area, mm -hmm. and there's a very real possibility that we could lose power. For the past two or three days, they've been talking about this weather event that is headed our direction. And then this morning at 10 o'clock, they upgraded the advisory to a winter, winter weather storm warning. warning. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so that, along with that comes the possibility that we could lose power. Larry and I thought it would be really fun for you guys to tag along with us today as we got ready for this possible power outage. And believe me, it is getting cold. Right now it's not too bad, but the problem is we're not getting too much snow, but it's the wind. Yeah. The wind is what's going to be the problem. Yeah, we're getting about, uh, they're saying two to five inches, but then that... Which isn't much. That's coming in with a, a, a straight 35 mile an hour wind that'll gust up to 50, causing blizzard whiteout conditions. So in preparation for that, we thought, let's just show you guys exactly what happens, how we spring into action <laughs> <laughs> when something like this happens and we get ready and we prep to make sure that we're ready for possible power outages, especially in cold weather. Because after that band of snow comes through, the temperatures are gonna drop really low and we're gonna have sub-zero temperatures like 48 hours after the snow yeah. actually goes through. Yeah, they're saying a wind chill factor of about 35 below with actual temperatures of six below zero Fahrenheit. All right, so hang out with us guys. And in case you've never hung out with us before, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median where every week we talk about practical frugality. Make sure your electronics are charged to 100%. My phone was about 87%, not bad. I went ahead and charged it to 100%. Fitbit, something you might not think about. If you have an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, mine was down to 4%, and my computer was running at about 47%, so that is plugged in and it's charging right now. So we wanna take priorities here, first things first. So one of the first things that I'm gonna have on hand is a handy carafe of coffee. Gotta have coffee, that's an essential. One of the things that we've talked about is you wanna make sure that you have light so we have these really nice tough light lanterns. These are the 1000 lumen lanterns and these are all charged up and ready to go. And I also have the 3000 lumen woo, <laughs> lantern and it is charged up and ready to go. So we will not be in the dark. Our next thing that we're working on here is we have the, uh, this is a Pecron uh, 2000 watt power station. We're gonna plug this into power and bring this up to a full 100%. It's showing 84% on the display. So there is the power going into it and that will very quickly increase up to about 500 plus watts of power and that will charge very, very quickly. We also have a smaller unit that we can run some lights off of. That is a 300 watt unit by EBL, really good. Has a built-in light in that as well. So, and then of course we have our emergency radio that's been sitting in the window sill and that's been charging. And then of course we mentioned having an analog uh, clock, a good old wind up clock. That is a very good thing to have. Well, let's talk about heat. Um, we have the uh, kerosene heater here. This is a good old kerosene. This puts out about 9,000 BTUs, very warm. It'll actually heat this entire room in the basement. It's a pretty good sized room. So if we're without a power, we do have heat and uh, we'll stay plenty warm. And I filled the tanks up on these yesterday so that they are full and ready to go for the storm. We have the extra blankets out of where they are generally stored. We just line the back of the couch with them so they're all ready to grab. Uh, in case the power goes out, we got blankets all ready to go. Extra blankets, super important. If you have a landline, you wanna make sure that your phone will function during a power outage. In this case, um, as long as this base phone is plugged in and we do not remove this phone from the cradle, that means that it will continue to power the phone even though the power is off. We have four more extensions, which means we have four other phones that we can take off the hook and use as long as we remember, don't remove this one. 
couple other things we really recommend that you do as you get ready for a possible winter power outages. Make sure that you know where everything is located. Have a list or have a specific area of your home where you put all of your winter weather supplies. And make sure your family knows where those items are too in case you're not home. One of the things Larry and I just discussed recently is what happens if we're gone? Because we still have two sons living at home. Do they know what to do if the power goes out and then we're not even at home? And we actually even thought about that because um, our older sons had a totally unexpected power outage at their apartment and we wound up taking a bunch of things over to help them get power to the refrigerator and things like that. Lighting, yeah. lan lanterns, extension cords, and a, a couple of uh, power stations. Yeah, so you know what? We actually did a video on that. So if you wanna see like what we took to our son's houses, uh, we'll leave a link to that video up above and in the description of this video. We have an additional thing that we've done today that we're working on and that's getting our furnace so it will power up during a power outage. You know, power outages during a winter storm are something that's very possible and a great concern. But there is something you can do to prevent your pipes from freezing and your house from getting cold and run it on a backup generator or on a power station. Now, our furnace comes with a switch on it. And I have hired out an electrician to come in and add an outlet to this and a plug so that we can unplug the furnace and plug that into our power generator or one of our power stations. If you have a gas furnace, you can break in to the electrical and you can supply power to your blower and the electronics in your furnace that will then give you the heat that you need during a storm. Now this winter storm is gonna be a doozy. It's, by Friday, it's supposed to get down to six below zero, accompanied by 50 mile an hour winds. So this is a serious storm and we don't wanna freeze. So we're doing something a little extra this year that we've never done is getting the furnace so that this can be run on power backup. Now I have a 4,800 watt power generator. It's a gas power generator that I'm gonna be able to run a nice heavy extension cord in and run this. I'm told that the, the blower fan runs at about 500 watts. We'll see what this one does and we'll see exactly how we're gonna be able to supply power ourselves and have our house fully heated. The furnace is running on the bypass circuit now. With the blower on, it's running at about 663 watts. So that's a little bit more than I would want to run off of a power station that's only a 2400 watt unit. That wouldn't run the furnace very long. But here's what the new system looks like. There's this, it has a switch and there's an outlet and that goes to a, um, a pigtail wiring right there. That black wire will go right into that receptacle. I got it running through an extension cord just so I can check the power on it right now. Let's talk about the gas generator. This is our Brute uh, gas generator. It's rated at 3,500 running watts, 5,250 starting watts. It's a really good size. I have a tent on it. This is a gen tent so that this can be run in rainy weather, all kinds of outdoor weather. Uh, it won't hurt the generator. The first thing that I did was I gassed it up. This is the, the gas cap here and just took that off and uh, I put a little gas in and the gauge over here is showing that it is almost full. It's just, just shy of being a completely full tank. We're gonna test out the gas generator, make sure it's gonna start. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is flip it on and then underneath here there's a lever and the lever has to be clear over to the far left and that is in the choke position and uh, this is the uh, pull in order to get it going. So we're going to pull it. It should start in just a couple of pulls here. Now we're going to test out the furnace to make sure that it'll run okay off of that power generator. I have a real heavy 
10 gauge cord and that's running into the basement furnace room here and that's actually right now hooked up to the gas furnace <laughs> okay we have success the um, the blower is running on the furnace and the burners are running and here's here's the new outlet access we just had our electrician put on it it'll plug back into here when we're all done and power is restored to the house so yes we have a furnace running on full gas generated backup power one of the things that the electrician told us to check for was to make sure that the generator is running smoothly And as you can hear, the generator is running perfectly. So we've got good power, we've got the furnace running, we're in good shape, we can now handle a complete power outage and keep our house warm. We realized we're not fully stocked on kerosene and gas, so we have our two and a half gallon kerosene can and our five gallon gas can, and we're headed off to the gas station to get our provisions. Absolutely slammed. The whole parking lot is completely and totally full. I have never seen it that full. <laughs> okay, oh my and that, gosh. that is Midwest craziness. Oh boy. When, plus, plus it's Christmas. When a bad weather event is in the forecast, especially right, right before, before Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. 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 That's why we did this earlier when they first announced there was going to be a weather event. Yeah. yeah. That's when we stocked up. Okay. They want to make sure that you're putting gas into designated gas cans and kerosene into designated kerosene. You never want to mix up the two. This is not by any means a complete list of things oh, no. you need to take into consideration when it comes to power outages in cold weather months. Uh, we did a video on it, a video series, mm -hmm. a two-part series, where we showed you exactly what we suggest you do for to get winter ready power for outage. winter power outages. We're going to link that. I put those videos together like in a playlist. I'm going to link that playlist right over there so you can take a look at it when you get a chance.